a beautiful day to beat the sun up. Rise and grind and greet your day. Put something new in that coffee cup. Live your life the 6S way. Stay safe, stay sane, stay sexy. Try that new morning routine. And follow your curiosity with RK. It is too early for that note. Hello, everyone. Hello. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Um, RK is in a meeting right now, so it's just me here. But I want to uh, say hello to everyone. We're going to continue with the seven habits today. I've got my Mary Pitmas mug, so we know it's going to be a good Wednesday morning. Guys, yesterday I finished editing the Big Ben Shapiro video. And... Uh, after I finished editing it, I realized there's so much, I need to add more stuff to it. <laughs> and I need to get it to the sponsor by the end of today. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna, uh, after this stream and I walk Chewy, I'm gonna get back to that video. Oh, I'm tired. Get back to that video and be like, mm hmm, need to, need to just add more here. Maybe I do a little, hey, it's editing savvy. Here's what I forgot to say. <laughs> bit of that although i timed the music perfectly with everything so i kind of hate that <laughs> oops that's the way it goes sometimes good morning emery what's up good morning kelly good morning cat good to see y'all this morning oof i don't know why i'm so tired today good morning aubrey good morning ami good morning kate good morning cool gamer Emery saying, good morning. You know what, Emery? Good morning, you handsome son of a gun. Good to see you. Um, Kelly, yes. I Yes, it is fucking freezing. Last night it was... Oh my god, it's, it's negative three right now. It's negative three without wind chill. With wind chill, it's negative 14. It's negative three. Jesus Christ, it is so... <laughs> it's so cold here, guys. Oh my god. Um, I feel bad for Chewy getting short walks, but like, if it's in the negatives, I if he refuses to put the little dog booties on, it's not safe for him out there either. It's not safe for life out there this morning. Oh my god. So yeah, it's freezing today. It's freezing. Monique's here. What's up? Saying I watched the la latest Boba Fett. Oh, I have not watched that. I don't watch most Star Wars things. But I hear they've been doing a good job with the shows. Uh, Nuka Cherry says, we're halfway through the week. Let's go. Yes, we are halfway through the week, which is good because I've been tired this week. <laughs> Kristen, good morning. 27 degrees Fahrenheit in lovely Texas this morning. I mean, that's cold for Texas, dude. That's cold for... The, the whole world's cold today. Uh, Monique says, does anyone think the mission statement is basically the same thing as a vision board? It's very similar, isn't it? Is this actually kind of similar? Like last week we were talking about Mel Robbins, right? And how she was talking about how manifestation is all about, uh, you, well, and she didn't have a real definition of manifestation. We were reacting to the video that Mac put up, but she was talking about how, like, if you want to have goals, you need to visualize each step. You don't want to visualize the end result. Um, and I, I think that all of this is kind of just, uh, all of this is kind of playing on the same concepts, right? I think that a mission statement, um, I think it's a good, I think, I think of it like a thesis, you know, like when you write a, when you write a essay, when I make a video, I try to have a thesis when you write a nonfiction book, right? Um, there's generally a thesis of some sort and, everything kind of ties back to the thesis at the end of the day. So if you have a mission statement for your business, right, you want everything to tie back to that mission statement. And if it doesn't, it might be outside the realm of what your business is there for. Or maybe the mission statement needs to be changed, right? So like Forever Home Friends, I have a mission statement, which is sharing real dog stories, helping dogs in need, teaching kids social issues, making new friends forever. So if like Forever Home Friends started selling like 
I don't know, kitchen utensils, <laughs> that it would be like, wow, that doesn't really fit the mission statement. And so it would not really make sense for the business to do that. So I guess it guides not just what you sell, but it also guides the way you interact with your customers as the way you interact with your customers, upholding the mission statement of the company and things like that. Uh, so I kind of get the idea of making one for yourself being like, you want to uphold it's like what what you do ties back to your mission statement. So I guess it could include your career goals or it could include like, I guess it's like deeper than your career goals. It's like, what do your career goals stand for? Like, what are what are all the things you do as a person? Like, what do you think your purpose is almost? I don't know. I don't know. We're going to we're going to look at his writing prompts and, and I'm going to try writing one for myself. I'm try writing one for myself. Good morning, Lisa. Yeah, everyone's complaining about how cold it is. It's cold everywhere. It's cold, y'all. Good morning, Melody. Good morning, Devastatia. Good morning, Shelby. Good morning, Anne. Anne says, I haven't seen this mission statement, but in general, no, I don't think it's like a vision board. Generally, it's to define your values. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think, I think, I, I guess I can see the vision board comparison in that it's, you know, taking a minute to visualize the big picture and that kind of thing. But I think it's also, it can definitely be a good way to put Especially, I think they're really helpful for businesses. I don't, I will find out if it's helpful for me as a person when I write one um, in a few minutes. But yeah, I think that they're, they're just more of a way to define the values that the business is supposed to operate by. Like we have a mission statement for our show that we wrote towards the beginning and our mission statement included um, breaking down echo chambers is a big part of our show. Uh, our show is like trying and learning new things in good faith, breaking down echo chambers, etc. Uh, things like that for our show, because it's like, okay, what we do ties back to that. So if what we're doing on our show is like completely irrelevant of that, then maybe we need to either reevaluate the mission statement or reevaluate what we're doing, that kind of thing. Um, Molly says neg negative two where Molly is, dude. Okay. All right, y'all. It's, yeah, it's, it's not just me and the negatives today. Good morning, Zeebs. Good morning, scene of the sassy Yowie Dragon. Theme song slaps. Thank you, y'all. I love our custom music. Let's shout out again. I'm just going to give another shout out to the musicians who made our music happen. To give a shout out to them. We've got Katie Shesko, the flute player, who has done a brilliant job creating our stream starting soon uh, song. If you like the song, you can get it on her Spotify. It's called No House on Spotify. Um, but she created that song for us. And um, yeah, so that that one, I love that one. Um, and then Gail Gallagher, who created our theme song. Uh, she's fantastic. You can also follow Gail on Spotify. And she's got all kinds of great music. Actually, it's so fun to look back at the beginning of our show where it's like, you guys remember that like it was almost a year ago now when Gail came on our show and performed a song live that was really fun we gotta do more shit like that that was fun dude I'm gonna you know I'm gonna I'm gonna write our I mean our show already has a mission statement but I'll write another show mission statement according to these prompts as well today see if it generates ideas we'll have fun with this Oh, it's negative eight where Aubrey is. God damn, it's, it's cold everywhere, guys. This is fucking cold. <laughs> We're going to all die. Good morning, Chelsea. Um, Monique has 41 degrees in her part of Texas. Count your blessings, dude. That's beautiful. Um... Oh, Lindsay, I'm glad you like the, the graphics beating the sun up. That was that was my favorite one I made from back when we did Grant Cardone week. That was the thumbnail for that. That was... Oh, guys, that was almost a year ago now. That's wild. But I had so much fun editing the theme song. Um, Hey, go Fohawk yourself, you handsome son of a gun. What's up? What's up? Um, Chelsea is warm in Minnesota this morning. It's zero. The wind chill makes it feel colder. Yeah, I always have to say the wind chill thing, too, because in Chicago, the wind chill is all, like, Midwest wind chill is intense. So it's like, yeah, it's negative three, but the, the wind chill is negative 14. And, like, that's bad, dude. That's bad. Sassy Emma Garumi, good morning. Jen says, if you just talk really fast, I bet you can add more to the Ben Shapiro video. Uh, you know, Ben just talks really fast. I'll just talk really fast too. Just channel him in the video. <laughs> Happy Wednesday, Liv. Hello, Brenda. Um, hello. Um, let's see. Show you, show you NYC. Good morning. It's up to 20 Fahrenheit here. Ooh, that's 
I'm a little jealous of where you are. Don't call it the Windy City for nothing. Yeah, that's the thing about Chicago is like everybody's always talking about Chicago's not called the Windy City because of the wind. It's called the Windy City because of like political corruption in the 1800s. And I'm like, I, I get it, but like it's also really fucking windy. <laughs> like, can we just accept that it's, it is windy? <laughs> like, the wind here is intense. Um, hey, Cher, what's up, Cher? Good to see you. Good morning, Carly. Yeah, I agree. Mission statements are a good foundation. The team version has the great discovery. I love the team version and mission statements too. I could be wrong because I remember in school having to write mission statements and being graded on them. And it made me hate mission statements for a while because I'm just like, how am I supposed to describe myself in such an abstract way in a way that I can get a grade? I don't even remember what my mission statement is at this point. Um... Sodium and Spite, you like my hat? Thank you. I love this beanie. I love the stripes and the butterfly. I love this beanie. Um, and because right now RK is not on the stream, I don't have to wear headphones, so I can I can keep my head keep my head nice and warm. Uh, Rachel Boren says, "Finally catching the live. I always watch the rewatch. Glad you made it! Yay! Nice to see you here." Uh, Gene says all the mission statement in corporate is meaningless word salad. A lot of companies' mission statements, when the company gets too big, they can start to feel lost in the sauce. You know what I mean? Morning, Jessica. In the office alone again. I'm sorry. Um, oh, I'm so glad everyone likes the music. Um... Let's see. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, Paige the Puppet. Kelly whistles the flute part all day. Love to see it. Um, negative 12 checking in. Minnesota gang, where we at? All right. Um, oh, Cher. Okay, Cher recommends. So, guys, Gail, who does our, our theme song, It's a Beautiful Day, Beat the Sun Up, that theme song. She has a song called I Saw a Dog Today. Um, or no, it's called The Dog Song. You guys need to listen to that one, too. It's amazing she has a music video for it where there's just all these dogs she like uh got uh got all her friends to put uh to like film their dogs and she made put a music video of just all these dogs it's really cute it's really cute and it's a song about how if you see a dog it makes your your whole day better which is true it really does it really does um good morning co steps good morning not the illuminati um Sarah says negative 10 in Madison and Midwest is we're suffering today. Good morning, Cecilia. Glad you made I'm glad you made it to a live too. Um boop, 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 boop. Bryce is here. Finally caught you live. Can't complain. SoCal is 40 right now. Oh, so all right, California. Well, okay, that's that's kind of that's kind of cold for that part of the country, though. Um, but still, yeah, that's uh that's that's manageable. That's manageable. Um, Larissa says shut my, in my office by myself because I need to get tested. Oh no. I hope you're okay. I hope you're okay. Hello, Ashley. Good morning. Good to see you. Um, all right, y'all. So today continuing with the seven habits. I'm thinking of those first two habits from the book. We got to be proactive. We got to begin with the end in mind. And the things that he talks about with that are largely revolve around the mission statement. So let's take a look at write it, the mission statement builder. I'm going to start. Um, originally, we were doing the family mission statement yesterday, but I'm going to do a personal mission statement for myself today. Um Oh, I wonder if I can put Chewie in a sweater today. <laughs> he doesn't mind. He he doesn't mind wearing sweaters, but I don't know if he he doesn't. I don't think he actively dislikes it. He doesn't actively like it either. He just looks really cute in them. Um, all right, we're gonna zoom in here. Select the type of mission statement you would like to craft. Um, Southern Nevada is gonna be sixty three. Are you kidding me? Oh my god! If you have a dog, make sure you take your dog on a million walks today because that is perfect weather. Oh, yes, I can draw. I will drop the link to the mission statement creator. Starry Night uh, says, bit late today. Good morning. Good to see you, Starry Night. So here is the mission statement creator link. There it is. So uh, if you go to that link right here, 
there is personal, team, and family. I think I'm going to start with personal. I'm going to start with personal. Oh, that's right. I don't want to dox myself because it's going to happen. Yep, that's what happens. When you when there's ever a box to fill in, it like remembers what I post for like, <laughs> I don't want my full address to come up. Um, oh, and then I had, I'm going to put in Ivy's email because I don't want to... Okay, here we go. Um, all right. Uh, think about times when you're at your best. What tasks are you performing? What environment are you in? Are you alone or with others? Does it involve something you're particularly interested in or passionate about? Is your performance influenced by any form of preparation? Ooh, interesting. Okay. When am I at my best? Um, speaking to a crowd, honestly, it's going to tell me to mention statements to become a motivational speaker guru. <laughs> no. All right. Speaking to a crowd. I'm at my worst when... I'm alone and sad. <laughs> uh, I don't know. This is oh, uh, this is gonna be introspective. That's okay. That's the po point. What do I really love? Okay, passion. Where there's passion, there is energy, and energy can be harnessed to create the results you seek. What are the great passions in life? When do you feel most energized, focused, and committed? What do I really love to do at work? Um. Live stream, edit videos, talk to the camera, write novels with RK. We'll say those things. What do I love to do in my personal life? Um, watch bad 80s movies with Tyler, play with chewy lift weights that's about it all right what else <laughs> so even spend with the best with the i don't know how to say that Vi vibinase vivinase i've never heard that um so some people are at their best on drugs that is okay um Um, yeah, exactly, Lauren. When you're at your best or worst is way too vague, and my neurodivergent brain is inclined to ask for worse. Yeah, same. I'm like, my best and worst, where? Doing what? I'm just trying to think of the times that I feel most motivated. Think about your natural talents and gifts. What do others notice about you? And what areas do you feel most skilled? Talents are as varied as people, and we all have them. What are yours? Um, okay. What is, what are my talents? Uh, my natural talents and gifts are storytelling, public speaking, comfort in crap, comfort, yeah, in front of a crowd, um, writing in a conversational tone. What other talent? I guess. So tal talents would be different than skills, right? And that talents would be things you're like naturally inclined to do. Because like, I don't know if I'd call video editing a talent. I think that's a skill. I don't know if anyone's naturally talented at using video editor. I don't know. I don't know. Now I'm thinking. Um, this would be a fun game to add in bed at the end. Um... <laughs> uh, Gene says, this is a one-way street to meltdown from overstimulus. What, like the thinking of all these things at once? Butcher Del Rey's here. What's up, Butcher Del Rey? Saying, natural talents include spelling and multiplying fractions. Oh, I am good at spelling. I am good at spelling. I'll say, uh, I'll say spelling 
and grammar because I can become your English teacher in a video. I have a whole English teacher section in this Ben Shapiro video where I break down his sentence structure and how it's manipulative. Um, I agree. These questions, these questions are way too vague. They need to get way more specific. My natural tell. What else am I now? Is this supposed to be a religious thing? Like what, what gifts has your creator bestowed upon you kind of thing? Cause like now I'm just trying to think what is the difference between a talent and a skill, right? Because a skill you, a skill you have to develop and a talent is like natural, but is there any such thing as something that's completely natural? Don't people aren't what, like, isn't there like a bias where like, what people think of as talents are really just things you're interested in. So from a young age, you do them more and develop the skill faster because you did them more. And so it seems like a talent. I don't know. I guess like people could say singing is a talent and I don't have that talent. Like I cannot control my voice. <laughs> and trust me, I used to, I, I love singing. I used to love singing as a kid. I walk around singing all the time, but I cannot hit notes. I cannot control where my voice goes. It's just not a thing I can do. I just do it for fun. So that's not a talent, I guess. Um, Lindsay loves what I'm English teacher. Okay, good, 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 good. Because there's a big English teacher section in this. We talk all about passive participle verb forms. And we talk about how they can lead to sentences with unclear subjects and how Ben Shapiro uses this particular type of sentence structure as a way to manipulate his audience. He does it a lot. It's got to be intentional with how much he does it. Um, all right, let's see. Storytelling, public speaking, comfort in front of writing in a conversational tone, spelling and grammar. Um, I'd say being funny. I think I'm funny sometimes. Um, let's go with that. What is my dream? Oof. If you weren't hampered by financial or social constraints, what would you choose to do? Is there something you're hoping to accomplish or some impact you hope to make? If I had unlimited time and resources and I knew I could not fail, what would I... Oh, so many things, dude. Um, oh, you think I could say that? I appreciate that. I, pre I do not hit notes very well at all. I have this, okay, this is a specific thing to me, I guess. And it's maybe because like, again, because I don't have the natural ability to sing at all. Uh, who I, I don't like, I can't think of the pitch. Um, you guys know, like sometimes in a, a TV show or movie, um, when a, a character will start singing, um, sometimes the character sings like i don't know how to describe this phenomenon sometimes you'll watch like a sitcom for example and a character will be singing in it and the character might be singing really well or the character might be singing really bad they might be singing really bad because that's like that's the joke is how bad of a job they're doing or they might be singing well because that's what their character does i when a character sings on a show i cannot tell if the singing is supposed to be good or bad until I look at the facial reactions of the people, other people in the scene. I talked to Tyler about this. Apparently this is just a me phenomenon. Does anyone else feel this? So like we we're watching this episode of Brooklyn nine, nine and this one character broke into song. There was this character. I don't remember who it was. This character who was getting fired from the precinct, but his real goal was to be a Broadway star or something. And his, he broke into song at the end. And I was like, I'm not sure if the takeaway here is supposed to be, that he was really talented at this all along or that he's a terrible singer and is going to fail at this. And so I had to like, look at all the characters around him, their reactions to know if he was bad or good. And Tyler was like, wow, you couldn't tell he was bad just by listening to him. I'm like, no, I really couldn't. I don't know what is considered bad or good in music. For me, I judge it based on how loud they are. So if someone sings really loud, I'm like, that's probably good because you know, confidence is the main thing. So if someone, like when I would watch American Idol auditions, if someone was singing loud and proud, I just was like, yes, get it. And then it would be like, oh, this is really bad. Wait, what? So that's, I just can't tell unless I look at the facial reaction. Okay. Kate has the same, pro oh my God, it's not just me. It's not just me. This is like a, a yeah. Was it that? It might've been, I don't remember. Um, oh, babe. <laughs> oh man. Um, Okay, here's the thing. Yeah, I know, because when I was in high school, I hung out with a lot of musical theater kids. 
and they were all really good singers. So if I would start singing and I was hitting everything wrong, it would like cause them physical pain to hear. It. And I'd be like, okay, stop. But some, but it was high school. So people would like overplay how much pain it was. And I was like, okay, calm down, calm down. Um, is there a neurodivergent channel on discord? Uh, sure. If you guys want to make a neurodivergent channel on discord, I'll join. I don't, have diagnosed ADHD, but I do have diagnosed OCD, and I think I'm pretty neurodivergent from that. I may be completely tone deaf. That's entirely possible, which is wild because I was a musician for decades. When I say musician, as a hobby, I was never a professional musician. I played saxophone and bassoon uh, for a long time, and I worked as a music journalist. Um, I think I just don't have the ability to hear it. I would just judge based on, like, if I needed to tune the instrument, I'd just use a little electric tuner and <laughs> uh, go go by that. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out on my own at all. So that's probably why it's good I'm not a professional musician. I think tone deaf means that you can't hear, like, you can't place the musical tones. Like, if you don't hear, like, if you hear um, a note, you don't know. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. Um. Yeah, OCD is de oh yeah, OCD definitely counts as a neurodivergence. Um So anyway, that's me. Uh I can't sing because I am completely tone deaf. Which is a darn shame too because I yeah, I loved playing the saxophone for a while, but I had to like use electric tuner and things like that all the time if I was trying to tune based on like if I was in a uh, marching band or something, I had to tune based on the rest of the section around me. I'd kind of struggle to know if I was in tune based on that alone. Um, but music for me was one of those things where it's like, it doesn't matter if I'm not naturally good at it. I just enjoyed it. So I did it solely for fun with no intention to make a career out of it. And then it was actually very fortunate because writing, I mean, writing was my main skill and writing for a music magazine was my first paid writing job out of college. So it worked out that I had done music for so long because it didn't really matter that I didn't know how to differentiate the musical tones and things like that, or that I could, couldn't, could didn't have perfect pitch because for writing for the magazine, it was about interviewing other musicians and writing articles about them and things like that. But because I was involved in that world, I knew people who uh, who needed a writer and things like that. So guys, sometimes the lesson I learned from that, actually, I wrote about that in Savvy Business Owner. The lesson I learned from that is that sometimes even if there's something you're not planning to make your career, if you're doing something for fun, you can find something out of it that leads to your career. Um, okay, I guess that's true. If you were tone deaf, you could, you could be really good at drumming because drums are all about having rhythm. I'll be honest, I don't have great rhythm either. <laughs> Uh, I, do, I don't know, understand memes, please help. I love that your username. A person will be able to perceive differences in musical pitch accurately. Yeah, that's definitely me. That's definitely me. Um, all right. Okay, so if I had unlimited time and resources and I knew I could not fail, what would I choose to do? Whew, unlimited time and resources and I know I couldn't fail, what would I choose to do? Let's think. What would I do? Doopa 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 do do. Um, I would. Here's the thing. If I had unlimited time and resources, I would do a million things. Like, because those are the things I have too many interests. So I would just pursue, I would say pursue all my million interests to the top level. Like I would just go balls deep into everything. So for example, what I would do is I would like, I would like um, enter a powerlifting competition, try competitive bodybuilding. Um, I would launch a clothing brand for androgynous inspired professional wear for women of all body types. <laughs> um, 
what else would I do? I'm just thinking of all the things that like I don't do because I don't have the resources for them. Um, let's see, what else would I do? Um, right. A rapid release series of a hundred plus romance novels where every single character is bisexual and many are polyamorous. I didn't spell that right. Um, what else would I do? Create a series of long form video essays about complex topics using fascinating lighting. Oh, you know what I would do? Direct, direct, um, I would adapt my novels into independent movies and direct them in Chicago. Um, get back into independent film and direct movies again. Um, damn, this is, I, I would do a lot of things. I'm just like, I have too many interests. Um, let's go with that for now. I think that's enough. Imagine our life is an epic journey and you're the hero or heroine. What is your journey about? What is your cause? What do you hope to achieve? Complete the following statement by describing what you are attempting to do in your life for whom and what results you're hoping for. Um, Sarah says, a great webcomic with only polyamorous bisexuals is The Barber. I've never seen that. I'm Yeah, I'm dreaming with the lid off, bitches. I'm going full, I'm going full Mel Robbins. I'm dreaming with the lid off. I'm dreaming with the lid off, guys. Um, Abby says two years ago, I thought I had no hobbies and now I realize I have too many, but not enough time. Same, same, exactly. Uh, all right. My life's journey. Jesus. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's vague. Okay. My life is an epic journey. What is your journey about? What is your cause? What do you hope to achieve? Um, my life's journey is... Butcher Del Rey says, uh, Don Quixote is slaying dragons and bringing in head to wind power. Data says, you are your obstacle. Yeah, I mean, I must be. Uh, okay. My life's journey. I wish these boxes were bigger that you type these things in. Because this is such a small little box to type this in. Um... And I feel like I was supposed to be like journaling about these things. My life's journey. Oh, I forgot like one of the things I wanted to do with unlimited resources too. Um, okay, my life's journey is... My journey, my life's journey is, um, oh, I can go back to the previous step. Oh, yes, I can. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was start a brick and mortar business with Tyler to make a co-op. Was it a co-op? 
um, co-op co-working space for makers with um, wood woodworking equipment, 3D printers, and other and other um, builder stuff. Um, get a second home in New Orleans with RK and build a podcast studio and have a patio of peace. All right. Now I have much more stuff in there. I have so many, too many goals. Okay. My life's journey is, okay, hold on. Our case here. This is good. He can help me with my life's journey. No. In my headphones on. I'm trying to figure out what my life's journey is. Um. What I learned in boating school is exactly, that's what this feels like. It also feels like another famous Spongebob episode of spending two hours just to write the word the. That's what this feels like. Although I have written a lot on this already. No, you uh, haven't. I wasn't here. And if Oh, the you internet... weren't here. That word doesn't count. Exactly. If the internet has taught me anything, it's if it, you weren't around, it didn't happen. And the world ends when you die. Dreaming with the lid off right now. Yeah, Coon Cat says, it's not, yeah, you know what? My life's journey is about creativity, but that's so vague. So my life's journey is, okay, it's following different, different creative ventures. Make it more specific. I was so specific in the previous questions. Make it more specific. Following different creative ventures. My life's journey is to own a lighthouse with a peanut farm. I know, but you were, that's the previous question, dude. That's the previous Suck question. Suck a dick. Oh, wait. So, uh, distraction time. Um, I finished my meeting this morning and I went to the bathroom afterwards to brush my teeth because I had really bad morning breath. And I looked down at this Costco order of toilet paper that we had just so that we didn't have to order anymore for the rest of the year. And the slogan on it is now thicker than ever. And my first thought was like, why do people want curvy toilet paper? And I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Not everything is sexual. No, you're not a <laughs> All right, I gotta imagine my 80th birthday. Who will be there with me? What will people say about your life? Uh, Wait, another distraction time. Did you yeah. listen to Rachel Hollis's podcast yesterday? No, I because Tyler, uh, I was gonna listen to it as I fell asleep, but then Tyler went to bed at the same time as me, and he doesn't like me having things on while I fall asleep when he's in there. So I'm gonna listen to it while I walk Chewy. Well, no, because I'm gonna walk Chewy for two minutes because it's negative 14 out today. Uh, so I'm gonna listen to it uh, as soon as I get back from walking Chewy, and then we can talk about we gotta talk about Rachel Hollis's podcast episode, but I gotta listen well, to it first. This specifically talks about it because she said that she visualized her 40th birthday when she was 30, and when she looked back at it, she realized she didn't write Dave's name once in it. Damn! <laughs> damn, Dave! Um, <laughs> oh man, damn, Dave. All and right, then I sent you there. that depressing text of, I really hate the fact that this is an incredibly personal situation where we're watching a marriage fail like it's a sporting event, but I don't blame myself because they did this to themselves. This is what the internet does, exactly. exactly. This is what the internet does, is it turns people's personal lives into team sports, taking sides. It's it, People's real lives become entertainment because people put their real lives out there as a product. It's fucking wild. Fucking wild. Uh, and tame at the same time. Okay, so imagine your 80th birthday. Who will be there? Who will be there? Uh, Tyler, definitely, because I hope he, we're, no one else is dying before 80. So Tyler, RK will be there. Um, I want to say my parents will be there, but like I got to be is, realistic. This is saying just that it's asked, you're supposed to type how we're going to describe you, not oh, who's going how, to be there. Oh, sorry. Well, why are you those questions then? <laughs> Rachel Hollis was who was going to be there. And so you got distracted from that. Say, it says who will be there right here. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, think, I think you're supposed to visualize who will be there. And because because the prompt is I will be the person who. Okay. Okay. And your so, your your answer was I will be the person who Tyler will be there. <laughs> I'll be like Tyler will be there, RK will be there. <laughs> um I will be a person who oof. 
So when I'm 80, I will be a person who is androgynous as fuck. Yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be fucking ripped. They're gonna be like, uh, dude, I want to be an 80 year old so Jackman with you. <laughs> Grandma is so ripped. Although I don't intend to have kids, so I don't know how I'm gonna have grandkids. But I, I'll, I'll be someone's found family grandma. That's the goal. Yes. Everyone was Betty White's grandchild. Savvy is my found family grandma. Yeah, gay aunt from the 80s to grandma. That's what someone is gonna say when I'm 80. Uh, you could say great aunt if you don't if you don't want to say my, my you could say my great aunt is so ripped. Uh, no, we'll just say grandma because I feel like I will end up. Um, someone will say I'm so glad that 40 years ago Savvy became my mentor and a mother figure in my life because I don't want to have kids, but I like being able to mentor young people. I so. just. I don't care who is who as far as the character is concerned. I just want us to be the grandparents of Hey Arnold together. You know, one of us be crazy black belt in Taekwondo at the age of 80, and the other yeah. one bench pressing 225 pounds at the age of 80. I'm so glad Savvy and RK showed us Hey Arnold, that old cartoon from forever ago, because they're just like the grandparents. Exactly. You can be Steely Phil if you want. I'll happily. The grandma's awesome. I'll happily be here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Ste Steely Phil, he's got the he's he's the, he's the chess master. So the Chinese checkers. Sorry, Chinese checkers. <laughs> um, how do okay? Um, what else was I gonna say? I'll be um. Let's let's roast Savvy and tell hilarious stories about all of her mishaps. Let's joke about how Savvy did wild things like. Oh, you know what? I want people to tell stories about me having sex with lots of celebrities. Remember when Savvy had sex with celebrities? That makes it sound like porn stars. Yeah. With insert here but, <laughs> so, but, it's, but at the same time we don't want to like say names because that could get awkward as fuck <laughs> well i'm not going to start visualizing which celebrities i'm going to try to fuck right now that's a little too specific for this um <laughs> remember when savvy fucked cthulhu <laughs> to save the world <laughs> um i'm finding the discord invite link i see someone asked about it Remember when we all lived in the hype house for two years? That'll be something in there. Uh, Savvy is a staple in our neighborhood. Her businesses bring so much joy. These are what people are saying about me. No, I'm saying Savvy is a staple in my dissertation. <laughs> Love it. Let's see. Is that what? Yeah, Grandma is so ripped. I like that that's number one. Um, what mark do you want to leave on the world? What impact do you want to have on the... Dude, I'm, I'm only halfway done with this. This is so fucking long. What impact do I want to have on the people around you when all is said and done? What will you have made possible for others? What do I consider my most important future contribution to the most important people in my life? Um, to answer Cher's question of why isn't there birth control for pets, isn't that just neutering and spaying? Them? Yeah, you, uh, honestly, if you don't want your pets to reproduce, you should probably get them fixed. Because, um, like, I, 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 I struggle to give, like, Rogue her antivirals. I'm not going to give her birth control every month, too. She's, yeah. she's just losing it. <laughs> Oh, so Cher, Cher wants Fruity to not get fixed. She wants Cher, Cher wants Fruity to have a bird boyfriend, but not to have bir little birds just yet. Got it. I mean, can't you just get a bunch of male birds? As you could just get a, a male bird, and if you could still get them fixed, but just have them be buds. Or I think don't... they could. They could still date. Like I'm pretty sure Chewie and Wrigley are dating, even though they're both fixed. Why can't they have fun like humans? Yeah, why? Know. Yeah, so you want the you want your pets to be able to have sex but not reproduce. I get what you're saying. 
Um, I, I, I res- I've never thought about this before, to be honest. I, I, I respect your empathy, but my my pets having sex for fun is not high on my list of like concerns. No, I yeah, I I honestly like no, and also I don't think most animals. I think like humans, some some species of primate and dolphins are some of the only animals that actually have sex for fun. Most animals they don't even have sex for fun. Like they just do it because it's a reproductive instinct. So it's not even like a fun hobby for them. I don't think they're missing out on anything, to be honest. I, if it's not a fun hobby, then how come dogs lick their dick all the time? Uh, maybe it tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> I love how my penis tastes like Skittles. Um, what's my most important future contribution to the most important people in your life? I don't know, but now that you're here, I have to pee. So you talk to the chat about pets fucking. Um, that's not going to happen, but how is everyone doing in the chat today? Aaron got me this key lime pie bang flavored energy drink. I haven't had an energy drink in forever, so I'm excited to bounce off the fucking walls today. Uh, that day's been good. Had that 8 a.m. meeting that went good. I have another one coming up soon that went good. I'm looking at Rogue fighting herself. She's good. Remy's just watching the TV. Yeah, you, you fucker, you. Um, just, just, just being a little. Oh no, I'm sorry. I don't I feel bad. I don't. He he looked really sad last night, and I am trying to tell myself, you know, don't fuck with this cat anymore. What if he's actually sad? You know, he he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't like being called a fuckface all the time. Maybe maybe he doesn't like it when I make fun of how smelly his poops are. Um, maybe he doesn't like when I call him dumb for trying to climb inside the toilet. So I'm really doing my best to you know respect his intelligence, even when he's doing something like putting his face to the fucking heater and bur- trying to burn himself, and I'm trying to protect him, or uh, putting his face through a plastic bag and sprinting because he can't get it off uh you know I'm, I'm really trying to say like oh you're so smart and i love you even when he's being an idiot i love you um <laughs> yo i'm back all right what do i consider to be my most um, oh i work in oh i'm sorry hey what's up no, go I, ahead. I work in finance i my technically my job is um investment executive i just basically research the markets all day and explain why i'm investing in these companies when I'm doing it and what the strategy is for the year for clients. Awesome. And I have a lot of meetings. The way I tell Savvy about it, it's basically, I I really love my job and I really love my, um, my calendar. It's basically super intense with a lot of meetings nonstop for two months. And then one month of not that many meetings. And then two months on one month off, two months on one month off. And that's my year. Okay, Savvy, you're back. Let's do this. Yeah, RK is a finance bro. Yeah, that's me. And I fucking love it. Yeah. I also have a collared shirt next to me at all times throughout the day. So I can put it <laughs> so so I can put it on during meetings and then take it off and put on a t-shirt or a hoodie afterwards. I love it. That's so smart. <laughs> What's my most important future contribution to the most important people in my life? Your organs after you died. Yeah, I just want to be, I just want to be, I just want to be there to entertain people. I want, um, I entertain people. When people feel down, I can bring a smile to their face. I want to be a safe person that people know they can go to for cheering up or a good laugh or a good time. Cry. A good Time. try, that too. It's a good, like, because I mean, we might just like go out to a party. We might just go drinking and sing songs at the bar. Oh God, you oh, cry I'm when you're even... drunk. Do I cry when I'm drunk? Sometimes. Let us know in the chat if you cry when you're drunk. Actually, let us know in the chat what kind of drunk. What are you putting off? Sometimes things you put off because they're too difficult. Uh, are the things you would strengthen you the most? What do you struggle to find time for? And are there things you really should do, even though you put them off? I need to make the following a priority. I feel like I have pretty good priorities. Um, like the following a priority. I'll say healthy eating, but I've already started making that a priority since I started talking to Kat as a dietitian. 
And now for the past two weeks, I've been eating foods that have or meals that have twice as many vegetables as any other food group. And I'm already getting healthier, I imagine. Um, I'm just ready for all my food to be gummies. I have gummy vitamins at this point in time. I have gummy weed at this point in time. I'm ready for like all gummies all the time. I, I feel like if I have the Willy Wonka diet, I'll live forever. This is our, these things are also hard to answer in the pandemic because I'm like, I could say spending more time with family and friends, but it's kind of hard to do that when I'm quarantining myself right now. You also um, spend a lot of time with your family. That's true. And we talk daily, face to face. You're that's good. true. I'm good. I have, I have uh, other friends that I probably should talk face to face to more often. You have other friends? I'm sorry. <laughs> You're my best friend. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, the eating, talking to friends, friends face to face. Um, wow, look at how uh, different our chat is with their drunks. Um, Sodium and Spikes, a fighter. Starry Nights, loud. Not the Illuminati, it's just fun. Uh, Shilla is a uh, happy. Kate is dancing. Cat is happy, and sweet sea monster just exists in their drunk state. <laughs> I self care things like showering and chores. Influence. We're influenced by those around us. The people in your life you hope to emulate. People who have shaped who you are and who you want to become. Imagine you could invite Jordan Peterson. Dinner, three people. <laughs> Jordan Peterson. <laughs> Jordan uh, Peterson. Oh. Grant Cardone. <laughs> Sorry, I got to do this with the screen off because it's bringing up my address and all that. Um, Not um, a gazebo is better at bowling when slightly tipsy. So how many drinks is that? Like how many? When, when do you start getting diminishing returns? Is it like you hit, get two drinks and three drinks you start getting a little worse? Uh, Becky's a relaxed drunk. All right, who do I want to emulate in my life? Um, Grant Card. I'll say I want to emulate RK because he lived in the moment. You want to emulate RK emulating Grant Cardone. Exactly. <laughs> there I we go. I want to emulate you living in the moment. I want to emulate um, Tyler because I want to dress like him. And I want to emulate, I should probably think of a career role model now. <laughs> oh, Dana knows you so well. The WeWork guy, Adam. Adam Newman. Oh, yeah. Adam Newman, but not a cult leader. I think how he just is a cult leader. Emulate how down to his he genes. builds an entrepreneurial community. Okay. I want to be the guy who knocks Jake Paul out in a boxing match. That's who I'm emulating. Oh, Monique wants to emulate me. That's so sweet. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, dude. So, oh, self-publishing is great. I love it. If you ever have any questions, just feel free to reach out. It's not, it can be a complex process, but it's also very doable. Or meet Savvy on the astral plane. She's, she's still striving to do that. Yeah. I lucid dream sometimes. Let's think can... of balance as a state of fulfillment and renewal in each of the four dimensions, physical, social, emotional, mental, and spiritual. What are the single most important things you can do in each of these areas that will have the greatest positive impact on your life? So physical would be... Ma masticate. Masticate with lupin. <laughs> masticate with lupin. Lupin was masticating. <laughs> physical... Um, be goth weight, with Hagrid. Gaining strength. Working out three to four. Oh, wait. Hagrid's a so Satanist. Weird. I'm sorry. Be a Satanist yeah. with Hagrid. <laughs> That's Social spiritual. Emotional. Um, talk to multiple friends, family members every day. Mental. Um, keep my planner in order. Keep my days, weeks organized. 
in spiritual go on long Satanist with Hagrid and let my mind wander to brainstorm things. That's the closest to spiritual that I have. Wow, you took it's like seriously. meditative walks. Yeah, I took it seriously. I want to know my real mission statement. I'm trying this in good faith, dude. That's one of our show's mission statements. Trying things in good faith from people we disagree with. Yeah, but uh, the other core tenet of our show is always have a sense of humor. And yeah. I just realized Have saying that out loud today. <laughs> and I, I realized saying that out loud makes us sound like the Joker, but still. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I gotta reshare. Okay. Prioritize. Assign a value or rank to each idea or theme that was proposed in the previous steps. Start by labeling each idea with A, B, or C according to its importance. All right. What are the top five to seven ideas or themes? Okay. My life's journey is following different creative ventures. I'll be a person who <laughs> grandma's over. I just wrote what everyone's going to say about me. Um, what do I consider to be my most? Okay. So I choose the top. Label each idea with an A, B, or C according to importance. This is a I came up with too many ideas is the problem. Getting ripped is A. Yeah, A is getting ripped. No, I would say that A category is physical making health. Making people laugh, being entertaining. Physical um, health, because you can live longer. Yeah, physical health. Although that's the thing, I don't really value my physical health that much because like when I work out, I don't like I do everything to the to the, the biggest degree, right? Like if I'm going to work out, I'm not working out to be healthy. I'm working out to get like fucking huge. Like there's no middle ground in anything for me. So I'll say that, you know, being extreme. Wow. Opposites. Um, the B category I'm literally just working is... out so to be 150. Oh, you mean age. At first I thought you meant weight. I'm like, that'd be very low weight for you. You know, 150 years old, 150, yeah. <laughs> 150 re revolutions around the sun. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't need to be 150 pounds. <laughs> yeah, I think you'd be very, you'd be very skinny at 150 pounds. Look at this. Look, 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 look at this example of how fucked up our perception of health is. I said I want to work out to be 150, and people are like, "You mean that's the weight you want to be?" No, I'm working out for health, not for weight. I, when I say I 150, be... that's the age. I'm working out so that I can uh, look like someone who could beat up any man on the street who tries to cross me. Um, so what's the B category? I don't know. I guess being entertaining, being extreme. B category is... B obsessed guess... or B average. Having lots of interesting stories to tell. And the C category is the specifics of what career I'm currently pursuing or what book I'm currently writing, that kind of thing. Now that you have your top ideas, you can start to refine them into your mission statement. How can you capture these ideas in a single paragraph? Okay. See, this is what I meant by the internet is ruining it. I, you said your top ideas, and like a toilet paper, my mind went to, so what are your bottom ideas? <laughs> uh, Why my is my mission, toilet paper curvy? My mission in life is to build a positive community of, uh, of self-starters with a good sense of humor. I want to use my skill for storytelling to bring people together. And I want to be remembered as someone who brought a smile to your face with my, my work. I sort of agree here. It's um, this whole mission statement. It makes me almost if, if this is the main point of the book, which it's not, but it, it's not the it's only the point most, of the book, but it's one of the big points but, of the book. Yeah. 
I'd say it's the most actionable point of the book. Um, it's it's the only piece of advice that I can recall where it's like this is something that you can actually do today and will pay dividends in the future. Um, and it's almost like, yeah, maybe you don't need to read the book thoroughly. You can just fill out your mission statement because it's a piece of advice. It's, it's a rather non-controversial piece of advice also. Okay. So that's my mission statement right there. I help you, fucker. No. Now I need to final review it. My mission state I say my mission in life is to build a positive community of self starters with a good sense of humor. I want to use my skill for storytelling to bring people together, and I want to be remembered as someone who brought a smile to your face with my work. I use writing and other storytelling forms to normalize the world I want to live in. What is my final mission statement? Harness the power of storytelling to connect with others. Boom, there's my mission statement. Um, I said I'm trying. I didn't say I'm succeeding. I mean, he's, he's a fucker. Look at him. <laughs> All right. Now I have discovered my mission. Oh, so now I, I, what do I do when I submit this? I guess it emails it to me. It's going to email it to Ivy's email address because I did not want, um, I did not want to be getting emails from this. Um, do you don't want to be on their radar? I don't want to be on their radar. Okay. I have defined the vision. Honestly, I feel like this is a decent mission statement. Yeah. Grandma's so ripped. Grandma's so ripped. That's probably the thing I'm going to take away from today. Grandma's so ripped. I discovered my mission. You have defined the vision and values for your life and in doing so laid the foundation from which to set long and short term goals. You can now consistently measure the most effective use of your time, talents and energies against a written constitution based on your principles. Okay, cool. Oh, I can download a PDF of my mission statement. That's fun. Do it. Download a PDF. I did. Fucking now dare I a, you. I have a PDF of my mission statement now. Um, so now I know what my mission in life is. Do you feel more accomplished? Do you feel more like a complete person now? No, honestly, it just made me think of all the things I don't have time to do because of that question that was like, what would you do if you had unlimited time and resources? And I was like, God damn, so much, honestly. Is it bad that I think my answer would just be like, if I had unlimited time, I think I would just marathon the Lord of the Rings movies today. Just See, that's why I said I want to emulate you because you can live in the moment like that. I was like, if I had unlimited time, I would launch five new businesses. Oh, I forgot to even put my unicorn bar in there. See, I didn't even put my unicorn bar. I was like, I will got to launch the unicorn bar. I want to launch a brick and mortar business with Tyler. I want to start a clothing line for professional. Stabby, if you have warfare. unlimited time, why isn't sleep number one? Because then you can sleep for as long as you want before doing any of this. That's true. If uh, I had unlimited time. I want to direct just... multiple independent movies as well. Oh, I want to reboot Degrassi. I want to make a Degrassi That's already happening. movie. Well, no, I'm, I'm talking about a reboot. I'm not talking about continuing the series. I'm talking about doing like a movie that uh, covers a, a significant chunk, like a trilogy, like a Degrassi the motion picture kind of thing where I can make Joey and Caitlin end up together. I want to do a fix it. I want to do a fan fiction movie. I, I like it. Is there is there a is there a word for fan that starts with M? Because fan fiction has that nice alliteration. So fan movie, it would be like um, something else movie. Hmm. I don't know. I, I wanted to say manic movie, but that has some different connotations. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I just have way too many things I would do with unlimited time. Maybe that means I need to start thinking about them because I was talking to Tyler the other day about how like. If the world ever does get better from COVID, I would like to make an independent movie again. I used oh, yeah. To, 
I used to do those in college. I really want to make more of them. Fan film. There you go. Right. Fan film. I do like mob movie too, but that's like people would show up expecting another Godfather. And then yeah. they'd be like, what the fuck is this Canadian trash? Sorry. I love Canada. Um, no, there's so much about like, I, I, there's so much about making movies that I miss. Like I used to love being on movie sets. I used to love like the collaborative element of it. Like I love making videos, but I do so much by myself. I, I miss working with other people and being on a set together and getting stuff done. Uh, sometimes I see stuff filming in Chicago. And I'm like, maybe I should try to work on a set again. I don't know. Um, Follow your gut. Um, yeah, maybe I will. I don't know. I'll start writing some scripts and see about making a movie. My, uh, one of my friends and I were writing this web series script together. It was called Riding the L. And it was about lesbians in Chicago. And we had all, it was this little sitcom about Chicago lesbians that we were working on together. But then COVID hit. Well, then she went to grad school. So we were going to make it when she got back from grad school. And then when, by, when she finished grad school, we were fully in a pandemic. So I was like, oh. So yeah, that's kind of how the world goes sometimes. I got distracted. I was trying to think about what else I could do if I had unlimited time. Are we immortal also if we have unlimited time? Uh, Yeah, I would say so. Okay, I'd want to go to space. Yeah, me too. Well, no, I might be too scared to go to space. Like, I theoretically want to go, but oh, oh, that was part of it too. You know you can't fail. So I know my rocket isn't going to explode or that I'm not going to die. Like, I know for oh, a fact I'm going to yes, safely space. get to space. Yeah, space 100%. I would space, go to space yeah. too. Space, space. I, oh, definitely. I want to watch Lord of the Rings in space. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, you now you're dreaming with the lid off, dude. That's yeah. Now you're dreaming with the lid I off. I gave myself permission. You gave yourself permission with to dream off. with the lid off. Exactly. Um. All right, Monique finished a mission statement too. Yeah, anyone else who wrote a guys, anyone who wrote a mission statement along with us today, if you want to share, post it in the subreddit today. Post yes, your please. mission statements in the subreddit. Uh, I dreamed with the lid off and the container dissolved. Now I'm just like going full force. Like I have more goals. That's a problem. I don't need more goals. I am already working on too many projects that I love, but I'm like, there's still more. There's still more I want to do. I, I don't want goals. I want yeah, assists. You... Yeah, that's right. Don't need life goals. You got life assists. Yeah. Cause that, that's a beautiful sentiment about uplifting others. You know, why score if you can pass the ball and someone else can succeed? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I could see that for you. You never seem to de desire fame or credit for everything. Opposite. If you yeah. didn't exist, I would delete the internet. Not delete the internet. Delete my internet. Not delete my internet. Delete my existence on the internet. <laughs> yeah, if I didn't. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm honored to be the person who's keeping you here. Yeah, AG tried and failed. I think it's because he's Australian. Yeah, it's because he's Australian, definitely. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I really respect a country that's also a continent that also has everything there that wants to kill you except humans. Sort of the opposite of the States where nothing wants to kill you except humans. Um. Jen says, suddenly becoming disabled at 42 has taught me how to look at my life and do what makes me happy instead of just trying to survive like I was doing before. I'm glad that you're you're doing things that you're passionate about now. That's fantastic. Um, it's oh, Gene and saying almost getting killed at 35 does a lot, dude. Gene, I didn't know you almost got killed at 35. Damn, I'm glad you're still here. Same. Wow, you guys have such interesting life stories. You always tell in the chat. It's always so interesting to hear from everybody. Um, Sweet Sea Monster says I came in late off to do my mission statement after. I'm curious. Yeah, so here's the link again that we use to do the mission statement. Uh, if anyone wants to write a mission statement for themselves, for their family, for their career, you can do it right here. Post it in Reddit when you're done. If you if you want to share, if you don't, if you're like, nah, the mission statement's just for me, then don't feel the need to share it. But share it in Reddit if you want. We can all talk about each other's mission statements. Um, I'm not curious. I'm just an ally. Just an ally like Dave. <laughs> um, Silly Dave. Tricks are for kids. <laughs> <laughs> all right y'all i gotta get chewy i gotta take him out and hopefully he pees and poops immediately because it is 
balls deep in the negatives today. And I don't, I do not think it's safe outside for anyone. Um, yeah. Okay. This honestly, this website was actually pretty helpful. This wasn't too bad. I kind of enjoyed doing this. Um, so this was something nice from the seven habits week. Uh, I mean, it cost you your, it's, it's not free. It cost you your email, but it's well, not... I, that's why I gave it Ivy's yeah. email. I don't give it my own email, but yeah, it does. It's a lead magnet in a way. It's trying, it's going to, it's going to give me promotional things and sell me things in my email now, which to be fair, it doesn't bother us. That. No, Wait, I, what is this? What's what? Wait, I'm going to share my screen real quick. I want to see what this picture and layout is. Okay. I'm just curious. Um, let's go to, here, I'll just do Yahoo Finance. Um, but no, I agree. Like, it does cost you something. It just doesn't cost you money. Uh, and th th there's something beautiful about that. And it did seem like it was helpful. I'm sorry I came on just to distract you. No, but, dude, I'm glad you yeah. came on. I prefer doing the show with you by my I, I, It's way more fun together. Okay, so what's this picture thing look like when I do this? Um, the am picture? I... Oh, you're in it. Okay, sweet. So, like, if I take off the the branding, where, where where's the branding? Oh, um, right here? It's the overlay. Okay, oh, sweet. So we're here. How did you do that? Oh, it's a different format. It's a different here. format. Okay. Yeah, it's shift oh, cool. seven. Sweet. Okay, I just, I just wanted to know what that looked like. Okay, cool. That's fun. I didn't know we could do that. Good to know. All right, guys. I didn't know we could do your mom. Oh! Oh! oh grandma's so ripped. Oh, not the Illuminati box smile, Chewy. Oh, thank you. I hope you enjoy it, guys. Chewy plushies are getting restocked soon. There's an the order has been placed with the manufacturer, um, and they should be here next month, hopefully. So. February, stay tuned for an announcement of Chewy Plushies getting restocked. Uh, remember, everyone has until the 31st of January if you're applying to be an artist for the our first cat book. Uh, I will be getting in contact with everyone who applied and requesting art sample, like further art samples and such, uh, starting or beginning of February. So I will see you all again tomorrow morning. Keep supporting small businesses. Uh, drop a like before logging. Yeah, uh, drop a like. Thank you. Thank you, Sodium and Spike. Uh, love y'all. Bye, friends.